Matthew chapter one, uh, and I'll let you set it up. Actually, Michael, the the whole thing with Joseph and the the relationship oh. with Miriam. Can you set oh, that up? Oh, real quick? Okay, no. uh, very very quickly. Nehemiah was on the road with me uh, as we were doing the um, Raiders of the Lost book. And so I was uh, using the Aramaic text because I saw a problem here. It says there are 14 generations from uh, from uh, from David to the carrying away to Babylon, to the carrying away to Babylon unto Messiah. When you count them, there are only 13. You, and you can read it in English. There are only 13 generations. We've got a problem right there. And so uh, so the, the uh, Aramaic, I was using the Aramaic text, and I was using a, an interpretation. Uh, Nehemiah would say, it wasn't really a translation, I was really squeezing this thing to say that Joseph, uh, his father was uh, the son, he was the son of Yaakov, and this Joseph was the father of Miriam. And uh, and so I'll let uh, Nehemiah pick it up from well, there because that at, is then yeah. when, when you have Joseph, the son of Yaakov, the father of Miriam, instead of the husband of Miriam, now you have 14. But yet in the later verses, it says that Joseph, her husband, Joseph, her husband, in Aramaic, that's a different word. And so, uh, so that was my my take on it. That is how I was explaining this. And then Nehemiah has listened to me for forty five cities to this. <laughs> it was actually forty two, Michael. I counted them. Okay, uh, okay, forty two. So, uh, in any event, um, just very briefly, because we're we're running out of time here, we'll come back and talk more about some of the other things. But the bigger problem in Matthew chapter one, and we talk about this, Keith and I, in the Hebrew Gospel Pearls, the first episode. Uh, and and I want to I want to call on people to go and watch it at nehemiahswall.com and and bfainternational.com. Now in that we go into great detail and we explain what the bigger problem is. The bigger problem isn't thirteen and fourteen generations. That's an issue. The bigger problem is Matthew gives the genealogy of Joseph, the adopted father of Yeshua, and Luke gives the genealogy of Joseph, the adopted father of exactly. Yeshua. And from David through Joseph. There are there are completely different genealogies, mm -hmm. right. and one of them is through Solomon, and the other is through Nathan. Their fathers are completely different genealogies. This has been something that the church fathers, beginning around the third century, struggled with, and they came up with all kinds of creative explanations, exegetical explanations, and some of them are so convoluted you can't even believe it that the father of Joseph. Uh, just yeah, really don't, don't even bother with it. I, I know, yeah. it is convoluted. convoluted things. <laughs> don't. And, and the reason they come up with these explanations is, we, look, we say in Hebrew, they're, they're doing eights in the air to try to, like, doing, they're doing mental gymnastics in order to try to explain why Matthew is one explanation, one genealogy from David to Joseph, and uh, Luke has a different genealogy. Yeah, let, let, me, let me bring up here, here Nehemiah. This was question number 10 on the $10,000 reward for any Christian who can answer these questions mm. out of the New Testament. Question number 10, show from the Christian Bible mm. that Yeshua is any relative of King David because you can't do it. It's impossible. That's why the $10,000 reward. Okay, so here we have this problem between Matthew and Luke. It's a, it's an age-old problem. It's such a big problem that the, the, the church father known as St. Augustine or Augustine of Hippo actually relates that he lost his faith as a child because he read the Gospels. He was raised you know, in this Christian background, read the Gospel of Matthew, read the Gospel of Luke, and said, this is all lies. They can't even get it straight who the ancestor of uh, Joseph is. Uh, he later, you know, he regained his faith through these different complicated explanations, but it's it's not a new problem, mm. right? So when these uh, uh, Jews were challenging you, Michael, they knew what they were talking about. They've yeah. seen in history that this is something that Christians have struggled with. Now, I heard you teach in 42 different times that the Aramaic has guvra, which normally means husband, but here maybe it means father. And I'm thinking, I'm sorry, I remain totally unconvinced from the Aramaic and my reason was that if I just read the Aramaic and didn't know about Luke, I would never in a million years think that Guvra or Gever means the father. It clearly would mean the husband, certainly in a Jewish context. It's Ish, 
which is man, which is when does Ish mean, mean, mean father? It seems very convoluted. You're bringing information into the story in order to make it mean father. So I had this information just in the back of my head, and I'm sitting at the uh, Jewish National and University Library in the basement. As this is being recorded, it's now today called the National Library of Israel at the Institute of Microfilmed Hebrew Manuscripts. And I'm going through the different manuscripts of Hebrew Matthew, and I'm cataloging what there is and what, you know, what there isn't. And I first find two manuscripts, and well, first I find one, and I look at it, and it's uh, uh, I won't go into too much detail, but basically it's it only includes Matthew chapter 1, and it only includes 1 through chapter 1, verses 1 through 16, and it only includes really the genealogy without all the extra story around it. But right there in black and white, mm. it says, or it's actually brown in another shade of brown, <laughs> but back then it was ba- black and white on the microfilm reader, it said, Yosef Avimiliam, mm. Joseph the father of Miriam. And I, I was shocked. And then I look at another one, and I find two manuscripts, one in New York and one in Oxford, one at the Jewish Theological Seminary and the other at uh, Oxford University at the Bodleian Libraries. And they both have Yosef Abimiliam, Joseph, the father of Miriam. Mm. And I contacted you, I think, immediately. I call you up and I say, Michael, you're not going to believe what I just found. And I send you a little photo that I took. And, and from the microphone reader, I wasn't supposed to do that, so I was kind of sneaking with my phone from the microphone reader to show you that here it said in black and white, Joseph, the father of Mary, what you had hypothesized and what many others before you had hypothesized, mm. going back to as far as I know, 1964, there was a scholar named Blair who published a, a very serious journal article arguing that a, the explanation here is that originally it was Joseph, the father of Miriam, and I stumble, I blunder <laughs> into two manuscripts where it literally says, we're not hypothesizing about what it might say, it says Joseph, the father of Miriam. Oh, and in my field, Michael, that's so important because a lot of what's done in, in the study of ancient texts is what's called speculation. It's what's called an emendation. An emendation is a speculative suggestion of what it originally read. Mm-hmm. What we now have mm. is a textual variant, yes. meaning we actually have two manuscripts where it says, Joseph, the father of Miriam, it's no longer speculation. Now, you could say those texts are corrupt, and you still want to go with the Greek and the same text that Augustine of Hippo struggled with, right? No problem. But we now, as a fact, have two texts, which explicitly say Joseph, the father of Miriam, and in the program I did with Keith, that's going to be broadcast actually today for the it's first time right on Shavuot, we talk about, we actually go into more detail that I can't go into now. I, I actually share a piece of the puzzle I'd never shared before, and I meant to share it today, but we, we don't have time in this segment. So uh, we go over to, he, to uh, uh, BFAInternational.com and uh, NehemiahsWall.com for mm-hmm. Hebrew Gospel Plurals Plus, where you'll hear this piece of information I never shared before, which I think Uh, From my perspective, it's a game changer. You have been listening to Hebrew Gospel Pearls with Nehemia Gordon and Keith Johnson. For a more in-depth study, check out Hebrew Gospel Pearls Plus at NehemiahsWall.com and BFAInternational.com. Thank you for your support.